There's been quite a stir caused this week by a revelation in this book, God, Spies and Lies, about the former editor for 15 years of the Sunday Times, Hershey Meiberg, having been an apartheid agent. The author is John Madison, and I have John in the studio with us today. Hi, John. Thank you. Did you expect that sort of stir? Well, yes. Uh, of course, it's only one small part of a very big book, but uh, there are people who, uh, who trusted him. There are people who always said he was not trustworthy. Uh, but the more important thing is, is what the impact he had over 15 years. But he was not the only one. I mean, you had a virtual nest of spies, if you think about the old Randelli mail days with Gerard Ludi, Tony Sterling, John Horrock, which you mentioned, you mentioned some of them. Yes, but you know, my book isn't really about spies as such. It's about intelligence and what its implications and how it changed the debate. What was important about Tertius Meiberg, among other things, was he stopped the Bruderborn dis uh, disclosures for a long time, not altogether because at one stage he was forced to run them again. Uh, but also he was appointed to be in charge of the Ron Daily Mail newspaper, which really was the rainbow nation of South Africa in embryo. And he recommended in a report that, you know, he wrote a report in such a way that it was pretty impossible to keep it. So, in effect, he played a role in the closing down of the paper. That brings up the one issue, too, which I think there have been some people who criticised this thing of, of Mayberg, particularly people who said that he was their mentor, etc. But I think you're also going to find some criticism from academic circles about the stress you put on the Afrikaner Brudebond and its power. Do you think it was that powerful, a government within a government? Yes. Well, yes. I, um, uh, sometimes people explain it in a way that I don't agree with, but essentially it was extremely powerful. It was the cement. Its organizational power was to provide both carrots, which were very juicy, and sticks that were very rough uh, if, you, if you followed their rules or didn't follow their rules. So it had enormous organizational importance. And <laughs> there are academics who now say it was unimportant, but I really don't think that, that stands up to the evidence. If you look at the thousands of pages that have been published on how they played a role, how they affected appointments of people, how policy decisions went through the Brudderborn before it went through government, I don't think there's any room for dispute. Well, I think I'd probably agree with you there, but what you also bring up is something someone I once worked with briefly in London in the exile days, Charles Bloomberg, Charlie Bloomberg, who was the person who actually did uncover the Bruderborn. And you've given quite a lot of detail. Where did you get all that background from? Well, you know, I knew Charlie, Charles Bloomberg. We were friends. And I spoke to him about uh, how he broke, to, broke the Bruderborn to open. It was, it was really one of the most important, important in investigations South Africa's ever had because he started off saying, this is something I'm going to break. It wasn't, you know, even with Watergate, although they did wonderful reporting, there was a break in and they followed it up and followed it up until they found all sorts of things. Uh, Charles Bloomberg said the Bruderbond is extremely important in holding together apartheid. I'm, I'm going to break it open. It took him really about four years and he did. Um, and then, of course, I talked to him about Mandela because he had a relationship with, about, with Mandela that was private and never disclosed. And when Mandela came out of prison, I spoke to him about Charles Bloomberg and he remembered him very fondly and, and it, it confirmed that they had been discussing these things as part of ANC strategy to understand the apartheid government and the monolithic power of it and, and work out the strategies that worked in the end by 1994 to break it open. Do you think this actually, I mean, these are there are lessons in that for today, surely, in terms of, of monoliths, in terms of manipulation, and in terms perhaps of secret cartels? Yes, and in terms of strategy, because we need, we clearly need a, a, a proper, properly thought out strategy. For me, what was amazing about Mandela is, although he had a great heart, everybody talks about that, for me it was his mind. He thought through a set of strategies, in, with others of course, not alone, that worked. And we're now bereft. We've got an ANC that's increasingly powerful. In terms of secrets, secrecy, it does have meetings uh, in secret that, that determine things that are supposed, according to our constitution, to be dis, dis, um, determined in open in parliament, including the establishment, for insta instance, of the, the choice of people for the SABC board and other things. Um, that, that secrecy is dangerous, uh, and it, 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 in, it encourages the ability to not really develop open strategies that are in the national interest.